What's going on everyone? I'm Corey. This is Offbeat Motors and welcome. If this is your first time stopping by, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Uh, today's topic, we're going to be discussing a few things that you should be considering when purchasing a vehicle, new or used. Stay tuned. So this is my opinion on things that you should look at. There's probably more things you could be added to this and um, everybody's situation is obviously different so it's not a one size fits all type thing so just take it with a grain of salt and just keep things in mind when you're shopping for a new vehicle. First and foremost, and this is something that really shouldn't have to be mentioned but does have to be mentioned, budget. Everybody has a budget. Well, in most cases, everybody has a budget. Most normal people have a budget. Look at what you got coming in and what you have going out, and then set your budget according to that. Um, obviously, if you already have a car payment that you're paying a monthly fee on, you need to consider, is is this something I can increase, or do I want to decrease this? You know, that that's totally up to you, and um, you need to figure that out. Banks don't take into consideration anything like um, you know your day-to-day -day expenses of uh, food gas and whatnot you know, or whatever types of savings you may have in store for yourself down the road so the only one that really knows what you can truly afford to spend or want to spend um, is you and just don't max yourself out on it you don't want to be car poor that's that's ridiculous so just keep that in mind when searching if you can't afford something right now wait six months you may be able to uh, work towards being able to afford it down the road but don't just jump into something and then increase your budget at the uh, dealer lot or whatever it is you may be purchasing your vehicle from financing is something you want to take into consideration as well um, that is of course if you're going to finance the vehicle you know if you got the cash and you're gonna pay cash for a vehicle that's one thing and it could work into your favor to have the cash up front if you can afford to do that. If not, you're gonna be like most of the other people in this world where you're going to finance the vehicle and you have a couple options there. Um, you could go to the dealership and just accept whatever terms they give you with whatever bank they deal with. Um, you don't know from you know anything. So there's that or you could go through a credit union. I've gone through a couple of credit unions for some of my vehicles in the past. Um, and they've been great to work with. You sometimes get a lower rate with a credit union as opposed to going with a big bank. Um, also one of the things about going with a credit union that could work in your favor, could not, it depends on the dealer, if you're buying from a dealer. Um, you can basically go to the dealer and say, well, I already have all my financing in order. And the way it works is the credit union will actually cut a check to the dealer. So the dealer doesn't have do any work in coming up with uh, financing for you. So that could help in the negotiating terms as well. Before you go to buy a vehicle, do your research on what's going to suit your needs or wants, whatever it may be. You need to take into consideration, is this the right vehicle for what I need it to be used for? Um, is it gonna be a commuter car? You know, if you drive a huge distance, then you may not want to look at something that gets you know, 12, 13, 14 miles to the gallon with a big old V8. Unless you can afford that and it's included in your budget, by all means, then go ahead and do it. Um, you may want to look at something that's a hybrid or a four-cylinder with a turbo or something. You know, What's more important to you? Um, is it sportiness? Is it economy? Um, can you fit your entire family in it if you have one? How many kids do you have? Do they all fit? Um, these things, types of things weigh heavily on your vehicle purchases. Is it your only vehicle, a commuter car, a second play car? You know, each thing is good. Each one of those categories is going to have different weights in, um, on them and how you're going to choose. And also taste. Does it suit you personally? Does it, you know, for me, I like the emotional aspect of a vehicle. So that's what drives me into choosing my cars. Once you get it figured out on your budget and what kind of car it is that you're going to get, you then need to look at if you're going to be getting a new car or a used car. 
know that budget's going to be a big factor in that and um, that's something you need to take into consideration because uh, you can obviously if you look at two vehicles and say it's a I'm just going to pick on BMW here. You're looking at a 3 Series. Uh, uh, Two-year-old 3 Series with the, uh, what do they got, a 2-liter 4-cylinder turbo in it with all the basic, you know, necessities that come in them right from standard equipment. Um, compared to a brand new, two-year newer v, uh, BMW with the same caliber motor and everything, there's a cost difference, obviously. The newer one is going to have some miles on it, and it's going to um, determine price. So you need to consider new and used. Um, when you're considering these new and used, the other thing you want to factor in is the cost of ownership, okay? Um, not only are you going to have the upfront cost of the vehicle, whether you're buying it outright or you're paying a monthly payment on it, um, but you need to consider how much is it going to cost to maintain it to keep it going in um, a condition, roadworthy condition and whatnot. These are going to include multiple different things like services, oil changes, tires, brakes, depending upon how long you have it, they're going to wear and tear um, and they need to be replaced. Is the vehicle covered by a uh, factory service plan or not where you get free oil changes? You know, um, that's going to affect the, the um, operating costs of the vehicle. Um, don't be afraid to call up a dealer or and say, hey, how much is your, you know, I'm looking at a uh, used vehicle and just curious on how much a 60,000 mile service is or whatever major service it is or whatever, you know, and, and just get a, a feel for how much that stuff costs because when you're talking about higher end cars like BMWs and stuff, parts can be expensive and to have like say a dealer do them as opposed to an independent shop, they're going to command a price to go along with them. Um, so it's not going to, you know, it'll cost less for a, uh, say, a uh, Chevy Malibu to service as it would a uh, BMW 3 Series. If you're buying a vehicle used, um, get a Carfax. Most dealers nowadays will offer up a Carfax, or if anything, they run a Carfax when they're considering on buying it from a customer that's trading it in. They use that information to help judge the price that they're willing to pay and whatnot. And they can see the history, how many owners it's had. Well, again, Carfax is, on, Carfax is only as good as the information Carfax receives. Not everything is reported to Carfax, so there may be gaps in history here and there. So just take it for what's shown on the Carfax. There are things that could be missing. Um, a lot of times they do pick up on whether it's a salvage tile or not, which somebody may not tell you right off the bat that the vehicle's salvage. You're on a Carfax, you're going to find out, probably, more than likely. Um, if they, they don't offer a Carfax, ask for the VIN number so you can run one yourself. Um, they're relatively inexpensive. You can do it right online and um, run it and see what it comes up with. Now, if they're not willing to give you the, the VIN number, and this goes for if it's a used car lot or a dealership or a private party sale, um, that's a red flag. Just walk away at that point if they're not even willing to give you a VIN number to run the Carfax. You basically want to know what you're getting yourself into before you get into it. One of the biggest things that's probably overlooked during the whole car buying process, um, or I should say vehicle buying process because it goes for across cars, trucks, SUVs, any, any type of car is, um, people will go to a dealership, they'll have this mindset of how much they're going to spend and I'm going to spend, oh, $400 a month on a car. You strike the deal with the dealership and it's $400 a month. Great, perfect. You just got yourself, I don't know, a brand new Audi A7. And you're trading in your Toyota Corolla. You go and do all the paperwork and everything else. The insurance gets uh, switched over in, in about a month. You get your first month's bill for your insurance and it's through the roof. And you start freaking out. Call your insurance company first get a quote on how much the insurance for that vehicle would be. You need to consider that and it should be considered with your uh, when you have your budget in mind on how much you want to pay for insurance as well. So uh, you look at the vehicle, you find out how much your vehicle is going to be and everything, and then you know set your budget on what kind of insurance price-wise you want to be. You may end up having to shop around for insurance because you might be able to get this same type of insurance through a different carrier for less money. So just do your homework on that as well and keep that in mind.
In today's day and age, a lot of things are done online, especially now with these companies that are doing um, online car sales, where you can buy your car online, sight unseen, you don't have to step foot in a dealership, and that's where they're selling it. You don't have to step foot in a dealership. They got fair pricing and all this stuff. It's all done online, and they'll deliver the vehicle to you. That's fine and Danny, and it is an awesome concept. The problem I have with it is you should test drive whatever vehicle it is you're looking at. Don't take their word for it. Never take their word for it. Always test drive the vehicle. Look at the vehicle. Make sure it's the vehicle you really want. You know, you're not going to really know unless you've sat in it, you drove it, you know how it feels, how it handles. Uh, you know, you may think you're getting a comfortable car and then you get it and the suspension's you know, hard as hell and it's a, you know, you feel every bump in the road or it's noisy and you didn't expect that. So know it know the vehicle before you buy it do you know go test drive and whatnot and if they're not willing to let you test drive it don't buy it get the car inspected especially if it's a used vehicle if you're considering on purchasing a used vehicle never ever buy it without having it inspected first uh, whether it's you bring somebody with you that knows vehicles in and out or you set an appointment with the uh, dealership across town that will um, sells those vehicles and works on those vehicles every day um, or an independent shop that specializes in them they will do inspections for you you know, you know pre-purchase inspections they have they usually have set checklists that they go through and they will go right through the car you have to pay for this the person or dealer of whom you're purchasing the vehicle from will not pay for it and they may actually do their own inspection but don't take the word for everything have it inspected independently whether it's through an independent shop or you set an appointment with a different dealer and have it done um, they will go through it they'll let you know you know probably what kinds of problems they've seen with these types of vehicles down the road um, they'll let you know the condition of the vehicle any potential problems that they can see popping up soon um, they can give you estimates on any type of repairs that could be needed which is going to be huge in your negotiating phase you can use that information to go back to the seller, whether it's the private party or the dealer, and strike a deal with them. Either they fix the vehicle or they take money off the vehicle and you come up with your price. One of my biggest pet peeves, and this is from working in the automotive industry, location, location, location. What exactly do I mean by that? Well, I'm not talking about the location of where the vehicle is compared to where you are. I'm talking about the location of where you physically live and where your vehicle is going to be operated. You want to keep in mind of where your closest manufacturer dealership is. Uh, so if you buy a GM, you want to know how far from where you live and operate that vehicle a GM dealer is. How far, you, if you buy a Toyota, how far that Toyota dealership is, or Mazda dealership, or whatever the manufacturers of the vehicle you're looking at buying, how close is there one to you if you're not buying it from the dealer? Keep in mind that you as a vehicle owner are responsible for the condition of the vehicle. If you purchase a vehicle, whether it's used or new, and down the road something is wrong with that vehicle and there is, say, a safety recall put out on the vehicle, it's your responsibility to get the vehicle to the dealership to get it repaired. It'll be repaired for free, but you as a responsible vehicle owner, it's on you to get it to the dealership. And I'm going to use the Takata airbag situation here as an example. This is a very, it's a very serious safety campaign because people can be hurt or killed if these things explode and fragments come flying out of these airbags because of the propellants that were used. It's important that they're changed and your vehicle is repaired in accordance to the campaign. You can't take your BMW to the Ford dealership to have a safety campaign done on it. It has to go to a BMW authorized dealership, which is a BMW dealership. You can't take it to Joe Schmo across town with his independent garage because, well, he's been working on cars for 40 years. That's not how it works. You have to take it to the manufactured authorized dealership. So keep that in mind on where your location is. Um, I see all too often escalations from customers who are not willing to take their vehicles to the dealership because they purchased a vehicle that doesn't have a dealership close to them. 
Sometimes it's to no fault of their own because they live on an island and stuff like that, and that's totally understandable. If you live on an island, you gotta get your vehicle from somewhere, and normally you go off the island to buy the vehicle and have it shipped in. Well, it's very pricey to ship that vehicle back to the mainland or another island that has the dealership that can repair it. So there are certain instances like that that need to be considered. Um, but just keep in mind where your closest dealer is. It, it will ease your pain down the road if something was to happen and your vehicle had to go to the dealership. And lastly, if you're in the process of making a deal with an individual on a private sale or a dealership and the deal is not right and it's not fitting the needs that you have or the budget that you have set forth, in realistic that is um, don't be thinking okay well I want a um, brand new s-class Mercedes for $250 a month with no money down and I'm only gonna finance it for 60 months ain't gonna happen sweetheart be realistic on your goals of what you want and if you can't meet those goals or anybody else walk away from the deal it's not worth it it's your money in the end you're the one that has to be happy with the vehicle and that's it just walk away if it ain't right walk away all right guys i really appreciate you all stopping by i hope you enjoyed the video you guys have a wonderful day and don't forget to like comment subscribe and don't forget to follow off beat motors over on instagram and twitter oh, that was pretty close backing into a spot here at work and uh, i'll catch you guys next time around